All right, we have a breadboard here. We're going to take some transistor measurements. First one we got to look at here is a PNP germanium transistor, an MP42B. Uh, we have ourselves a 2.2 mega ohm resistor here, and we have a 2.472K resistor here. We also have ourselves a power supply. Should be of 9 volts. Let's take a quick measurement. It's pretty close to 9 volts. All right. As of this transistor right here, we have the 9 volts coming into the emitter pin, and we have this uh, resistor here going from the collector pin straight to ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick measurement first across the collector resistor here to see what kind of leakage we're getting. 0 0.346 volts, or 346 millivolts. And now let's take this uh, 2.2 mega ohm resistor and apply that to the base of this transistor. And now let's take a measurement of the collector resistor we have here. Oops, try the other way around. 0 0.963 volts, or 963 millivolts. All right, now let's take a look at the diagram and see what we got here. So when people typically go down the path of germanium transistors, whether to be making clones of really old pedals or just trying to make the gnarliest fuzz pedal possible, you typically start with PMP germanium transistors. Though they aren't typically made anymore, there are plenty of old ones floating out there just waiting to be claimed. But how do we know that what we got is going to be any good for our projects? Well, this is why we're doing this. With a digital multimeter and a couple of resistors, we can learn a lot. Firstly, we need the resistors, preferably ones with 1% tolerances. One will be a 2.2 mega ohm resistor, and the other will be a 2.4K resistor. However, we're trying to more precisely get a 2.472K resistor, but those are going to be kind of hard to find on a digital store somewhere, so just buy a few 2.4K resistors and measure which one's the closest to this precise value. I'm being picky about the ohms on this because if you have exactly 2.2 mega ohms and 2.472K ohms and we're using a 9 volt battery that's exactly at 9 volts, you'll find that the voltage across the collector resistor, that 2.472K resistor there, uh, will be numerically equal to the indicated gain when we're doing measurements. Because this is a germanium transistor, we know that there's going to be leakage, so we need to figure that out first. The collector resistor right here will convert any leakage current from the transistor into voltage that we can then read on the meter. So a 2,472 ohm resistor is 2.472 volts per milliamp, so a milliamp of leakage will equal 2.472 volts to come up on the display of the digital multimeter. So in the case of our germanium PMP uh, MP42B transistor, what we got on that measurement there was 0 0.346 volts. So divide 0 0.346 by 2.472, and we get a leakage of 0 0.14 milliamps, or 140 microamps. Okay, so now that we know how much leakage we have in microamps, how much is too much? Well, 100 microamps is common, uh, 200 microamps is still pretty common, anything beyond 300 microamps isn't too good, and anything more than 500 microamps or half a milliamp, that's probably bad. To test the total gain, we connected a 2.2 mega ohm resistor to the base. This causes a touch more than 4 microamps of base current to flow into the base of the transistor. The transistor then multiplies this by its internal gain and the sum of its leakage, which doesn't change with the base current, and the amplified base current itself. If the transistor has a gain of 100 and no leakage, the voltage across this 2.472K resistor would be calculated as 4 microamp times the assumed 100 gain times the resistance, 2472, and that equals basically 0 0.9888 volts which is close to 1 100th of the true gain. So we can use this now to start calculating gains. So our germanium PMP transistor, we measured the voltage across the collector resistor at 0 0.963 volts, meaning we would have a gain of 96.3 if there wasn't any leakage. However, we know this transistor did have leakage, so we need to subtract it. 
So the true gain is calculated by going 0.963 volts minus 0.346 volts, that leakage that we got from the calculations earlier, and that equals 0.617 volts or a gain of 61.7. So that's what we got with this germanium PMP transistor. All right, so here we have a germanium NPN transistor. We have a, what appears to be a clone of a 2N211. We had to change the polarities from what we were measuring when we were doing the PMP transistor. So now hot's down here, ground's on this rail. However, everything's practically the same. We still have our 2.472K resistor going to the collector on the transistor. And the emitter pin, instead of now going to 9 volts, it's going to ground. So nothing at the base. Let's take a measurement on the collector resistor to see what kind of leakage that this guy's given. Zero point eight five uh, eight four we'll call it. So eighty four millivolts. And let's now apply current down here to the base pin. And now let's get a measurement on that collector. Zero point two six nine. So 269 millivolts. All right, let's go to the example and see what that means. So here we have our setup for our germanium NPN 2N211 transistor. Germanium NPN transistors are rather rare, but if one stumbles upon one, they do make for great guitar pedals, so long as they're in spec. Being NPN, this comes with a lot of advantages. You don't need a special separate power supply to work with your pedal chain, and as a designer, you don't need to use any max 1044 style charge pumps to flip polarity on your circuit. However, aside from the drawback of rarity, you still have to contend with the leakage issues that you get with germanium transistors. So, let's measure the leakage. Notice how we flipped the polarity on our power supply here? And that's because we went from a PNP to an NPN transistor. On our breadboard, we got a voltage readout of 0.084 volts on this collector resistor. So 0.084 divided by 2.472 is equal to 0.034 milliamps or 34 microamps of leakage, which is actually really good. Then we connected the base resistor to the transistor on our breadboard. When we did this, we got a readout of 0.269 volts across the collector resistor. 0.269 volts minus 0.084 volts equals 0.185 volts or a tremendous gain of 18.5. This is often the case with a lot of germanium transistors that are NPN, low gains. However, we'll see later on that this can actually serve a purpose. Okay, so now we saw what a NPN germanium transistor will look like. Now let's take a look at a silicon NPN transistor. So here we have a 2N3904, basic jelly bean bi bipolar junction transistor NPN style silicon. Nothing fancy. Nothing on the base. Let's measure that collector current for leakage. And as you can see right here, zero volts. This is what we expect with a silicon transistor. But if we still apply the current to the base, we should be able to get a measurement for gain. And let's take a look here on the collector resistor. And we are showing 2.23 volts on that resistor. So here we have our setup for our silicon NPN transistor, the ubiquitous 2N3904. These guys are cheap and can be found everywhere. Guitar pedals, radios, TVs, black market military surplus. Again, being NPN, we got a lot of advantages that the germanium transistors mentioned before. However, let's take a look at the leakage. When the base pin is left disconnected on the transistor, as shown here, we took a voltage readout on the collector resistor, and we got a voltage reading of zero. This indicates that there is practically no leakage, unlike its germanium brethren. This is one reason why in modern electronics, silicon transistors replace germanium ones. All right, well, if we don't have to subtract leakage, what do we have for gain? Well. When we connected the 2.2 mega ohm resistor to the transistor's base on our breadboard, we got a voltage readout of 2.23 volts on the collector resistor. 
2.23 volts minus nothing is still 2.23 volts, or a gain of 223. Gains of modern silicon transistors such as the 2N3904 or the 2N5088 are typically measured in hundreds and in some cases even in thousands, far cry from the tens and hundreds of the typical germanium transistors. But what if we want a germanium sound for our pedal, but want the advantages of high gain and low leakage that can be found with our MPN silicon transistors? This is where a 20th century Hungarian electronics engineer named George Clifford Ziklai comes in. Born in Budapest, Hungary in 1909, he later immigrated to the United States in 1930, where he came to work for RCA, Westinghouse, and Lockheed. In 1956, while at RCA, he patented the push-pull complementary type transistor amplifier, which we know today as a Ziklai pair. Here's a schematic. In this case, we're starting with an NPN silicon transistor going into a PNP germanium transistor. We tie the emitter pin on the NPN transistor here to the collector pin of the PNP transistor, and then the collector pin of the NPN goes into the base pin of the PNP. The PNP's emitter pin uh, becomes the Ziklai pair's collector, and the PNP's collector pin becomes the emitter of the Ziklai pair. The base of the Ziklai pair is found by the base of the NPN transistor here. Also note that there's this 100K limit resistor, which is connecting to the base of the PNP uh, and the collector of the NPN right here. And this is used to quell the leakage coming off of the PNP transistor. Okay, so here we have a Ziklai pair on a breadboard. We have an NPN silicon transistor going into a PNP germanium transistor. The silicon is a 2N3904, and the germanium PNP is a MP42B. We still have our quote-unquote collector resistor here, which is the 2.472 kilo-ohm resistor. Uh, we still have our 2.2 mega-ohm base resistor right now not plugged into anything. And then we also have an additional 100 kilo-ohm resistor going into the collector pin of that NPN. Now this, this whole Ziklai set right here is actually an NPN transistor, being that it's an NPN going into a PNP. So let's take a measurement here of the leakage going across the collector pin of this set. And as you can see here, we got uh, 0 0.129 volts or 129 millivolts of leakage, much less than what we did have on the PNP transistor when it didn't have the silicon NPN to help it out. And now let's actually attach some base current here. And now we should see what our gain looks like. And we're getting 8.66 volts. So that's a tremendous gain. So let's take a look on the diagram and see what this means. So here we have our setup for our Ziklai pair. We have a PNP germanium transistor for that sweet sound we want, but we keep the whole circuit MPN for those types of advantages we get from MPN circuits. And we get the lower leakage and much higher gain due to our silicon NPN transistor in our pair. So let's measure the leakage. On our breadboard, we got a voltage readout of 0 0.129 volts on the collector resistor. 0 0.129 divided by 2.472 equals 0. 0.052 milliamps or 52 microamps of leakage, which is really, really good. So how about the gain? When we connected the 2.2 mega ohm resistor to the base of the Ziklai pair on our breadboard, we got a voltage readout of 8.66 volts on the collector resistor. 8.66 volts minus 0 0.129 volts equals 8.531 volts, or a gain of 853.1. Similar to a Darlington pair, on a Ziklai pair, the gains of the transistors roughly multiply together and create a huge amount of gain. So I hope these examples help you folks a bit in understanding gains and leakages from your transistors and maybe inspire some to try implementing NPN PMP Ziklai pairs in your pedal designs. I mentioned earlier that with a germanium NPN transistor having such a low gain, that there could be a scenario where it might work out. And if that NPN germanium transistor has a low leakage, 
and the leakage on the PMP germanium isn't too bad, you can create a full germanium Ziklai pair as well and get some really cool results. Well, that's all for this video. If you like these kind of videos, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to support us, please visit our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au where we do have a lot of germanium transistors available at a good price. Anyways, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.